Hi, my name is Skylar Church. I am a California real estate broker as well as a member of the education department at accredited real estate schools. We provide those course requirements to be eligible to take the state exam in California, but also a bunch of different options for preparation so you're prepared to pass the state test. One of those options is practice questions, and today we're going to discuss just a few of those questions to help you prepare. However, if you want access to our entire database, we do have a program that's $50, and you get one-year access to our on online platform of over 3,600 practice questions. So I do recommend checking that out if this is something of interest to you, and I have that link below. As always, though, please subscribe to our channel so we can make sure to keep videos coming. But let's dive into some practice questions. One, a house costs $300,000. Loan was $250,000. How much was one discount point? A, $6,000. B, $3,000. C, $2,500. D, $250. Well, as always, we got to look at the question. What are they asking here? What is one discount point worth in this question? Well, discount points we know are 1% of the loan amount and you pay that up front to reduce your interest rate. So if the loan was $250,000, one discount point would be 1% of that. So that would be $2,500. So C is the correct answer. So to clarify, discount points. So a borrower can pay a lender money up front, and this is called a discount point, and it reduces or discounts the loan's interest rate. So a discount point is 1% of the loan amount. Um, and so 1% of the loan amount you would pay, so in this example, 2,500, and you would be able to reduce the interest rate. Usually it's reduced about an eighth of a percent, um, but in this particular question, it was asking what the cost of the dis discount point. Two, if a buyer would like to move in early, what should the agent do? A, set up a temporary lease with the buyer prior to informing the seller. B, obtain written consent from the seller. C, use a separate purchase contract to memorialize the event. D, utilize a separate agreement between the buyer and the agent. Okay, so the buyer is wanting to move in early to the property, which honestly, not usually a good idea because it can um, involve a lot of issues um, with insurance, the seller, um, if the buyer doesn't close on it, and then getting the buyer out. But sometimes, you know, it could work out. And so in this case, the buyer wants to. So what does the agent, so the agent representing the buyer, want to do? Um, well, yes, you would want to set up a temporary lease. We call this a short lease or an interim occupancy agreement. But you don't set it up with the buyer prior to informing the seller. You need to have the seller's consent. So the best answer out of all of these is B, obtain written consent from the seller. And this written consent is going to be a short lease, so like an interim occupancy agreement, and this will allow the buyer to move in early. Um, you wouldn't use a separate purchase contract, um, and you wouldn't utilize a separate agreement between the buyer and the agent. Now, this agreement, though, could be between the buyer and the seller, then that might be a correct answer, but no. The best answer for this question is B, obtain written consent from the seller. Three. If the seller changes his mind regarding selling a property and the buyer wants to gain access to the title, what could the buyer do? A, file an interpleader action. B, record a mechanics lien. C, start a suit for breach of contract. D, institute a suit for specific performance. So if we break down the question, we're looking at the fact that the seller doesn't hold up their end of the bargain. Due to that, the buyer is wanting the seller to do so. So what can the buyer do to actually have the seller convey the property to the buyer? Well, out of these answer options, two should be sticking out to you because we know interpleader action does not um, is not applicable in this particular instance. This is something that's usually done within escrow when there's a dispute in escrow, um, usually over like an earnest money deposit. So we can just discard those as valid um, options because they're not. 
So um, then we're looking at C and D. Well, a seller is in breach of contract, so the buyer could start a suit for that. But then there's the option, though, of institute a suit for specific performance. And that is the best answer because specific performance is in uh, basically deal specifically <laughs> with these types of issues where you're wanting to make the buyer or the seller hold up their end of the bargain. So in this case, the seller actually sell the property to the buyer. And so that would be the best answer. Of course, though, this for specific performance, remember the consideration. So the thing of value or service that you're providing has to be of uh, uh, reasonable for it to actually be held up in court. So D is the correct answer. Four, the minimum clearance for a raised foundation crawl space is A, 12 inches, B, 18 inches, C, 24 inches, D, 36 inches. Okay, so we're look, talking about a raised foundation, that crawl space. What is the minimum clearance? Well, you have to have this memorized and you should know 18 inches. 18 inches. Five. What is dealt with in escrow that, this, that is shared between a buyer and seller? A, prorations. B, appraisal costs. C, credit report fees. D, loan fees. So what's dealt with in escrow that is shared between both parties of the buyer and seller? Well, looking at this, we know escrow deals with prorations. So this is dealing with rents, taxes, um, a bunch of other things um, that we were, were wanting to make fair for what the buyer, um, what the seller may have overpaid um, and what the buyer, for instance, may be, um, the buyer would be entitled to. So prorations is something that the escrow deals with and it's dealt with between both parties. Appraisal costs, no, that deals with just the, per the party that is obtaining the appraisal. So usually the buyer because the lender requires it. C, credit report fees. Nope, that wouldn't be something shared between the two parties. And loan fees. Nope, because the buyer is the one that's ascertaining the loan. So the loan's not required for the deal, but it is required for the buyer for their financing. So that's not shared between the two. So the best answer is A, prorations. Thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions at all, feel free to contact us. And we have some other information posted below and a bunch of other videos. So make sure to subscribe to our channel and also check out our website. But feel free to contact us with any questions and good luck with your licensing journey.